they started off with uh, the, uh, the common data environment. But eventually they want to move back, uh, so they're now implementing the common data environment platform, which is the backbone, and, and then now they're looking into the common modeling environment. So certain BIM tools, right? Uh, the design, the architectural, the structural, that's on a separate one. But I'm also talking to the asset management and operations team because they, at, at this point, with the, the, with the start, uh, with the end in mind uh, at the start, they already uh, need to have a framework for asset management, correct? Because why we're creating all this information. In fact, it's already part of the the common data environment because uh, we are doing asset tagging. So they're creating this uh, non-physical assets here because you're designing. Let's say, for example, a structure, right? A rail structure. So you're designing that, and that information is there. Now you need to tag this to your certain assets so that when you hand it over to operations and maintenance, the operator knows exactly this design and this specification is tagged to this physical asset. You know, there's an asset tagging. So that's a small part of uh, asset management. Then that information, when you hand over to operations and maintenance, they, we have specific uh, uh, asset performance management uh, capabilities to predict when the asset is going to fail. Right, and provides you a life cycle cost. Life cycle cost is means to say how much is it going to cost us if whether we continue to maintain it or replace it. Right. So that information needs to be essentially there when you know from the start. But if you don't have, like for now, the, what's happening now is the operations and maintenance. They operate ad hoc. When something happens, they go to the site. 